CJ Friedel, broken wrist. That throws a big wrench in the Reds' outfield plans. We're going to tell you how they'll adjust on today's Locked on Reds. Let's go. You are Locked on Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds, and my name is Jeff Carr. His name is Steve Hoffenbaker, and we are lifelong Cincinnati Reds fans that have turned an addiction into information for you. When it comes to the Cincinnati Reds, we're here with you every single day because we are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank you, those of you out there who are everydayers hanging with us here. A little bit later release on a Monday afternoon, but we were wanting to get all of our ducks in a row, get all the information out there. We've got some great stuff for you here because there's a lot to talk about. The, the Reds are dealing with the injury bug. And to be quite frank, there's lots of folks that are like, whoa, lots of injuries here. Are we, are, are we okay? We're going to tell you why we're okay. We're going to look at how the Reds roster will move uh, now that TJ Friedel is out. And we're going to dive in specifically about all of the information on this injury. The, uh, TJ Friedel is he's going to be out for a couple of months here. We're going to tell you just how long on today's Lockdown Reds podcast that is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And Steve, where we will get started, uh, TJ Friedel is out. Uh, he had a broken wrist, non-displaced fracture of the wrist. And, and, and look, I, I think that this really, I, I don't say it torpedoes it because the Reds still have plenty of talent on their team, but it certainly makes the division a little bit harder and especially makes a good start to the season a lot harder to see without your everyday center fielder and a guy who led the team in war last year. Yeah, this is kind of a big blow, Jeff. I mean, first of all, just what he brings to being the, the center field captain, the outfield captain for an outfield that's going to have a lot of guys in it that are inexperienced and that – don't necessarily know what they're doing all the time. Um, it was going to be really important to have a field general out there that could kind of direct traffic and keep things running as smoothly as possible. That takes a hit. Uh, you know, you talk about this non-displaced fracture. That's great. That means they didn't have to go in and realign bones. Uh, it can just be allowed to heal. Uh, otherwise, this would have been a much bigger problem. So I I'm glad that it was a non-displaced fracture. But, you know, I I'm look, I have a bone to pick pun intended with, <laughs> with TJ Friedel. Great Look, choice of words. I, I, I get being a competitor and I get wanting to play to the best of your ability and to give it your all. But this is spring training in Goodyear, Arizona. Why in the wide world of sports are you diving for a ball in Goodyear, Arizona when you are as integral to this team as TJ Friedel is, you have to be smarter than that. There is no good reason for you to go 110% in Goodyear, Arizona. Nobody is taking TJ Friedel's job. He's not in danger of not making this team or losing a roster spot. Uh, he needed to be smarter in that situation. I tell you, I agree with you, but I also know why he did it, and I'm not going to fault him for doing this. You and I had a conversation about this off air. He is, you know, when it comes to being on the field and the type of player that he is, he is a Ryan Friel type of player. He is go 100% of the time and, and he's go, he's 150%, 100% of the time. I really think that he is a guy coming into this season that he, I, I'm not going to say that he sees the doubters. But he's seen the doubters his entire career. Nobody put him on a top prospect list. Whenever he was called up, nobody really cared. Whenever he was named the opening day center fielder last year and, and, and the starting center fielder last year, everybody was like, are you sure? Are you sure about that? And then even at the end of the season, everybody's telling me why Spencer Steer and Matt McClain were more valuable than TJ Friedel. Well, now here we go. Now we're going to see exactly how TJ, how valuable TJ Friedel was because he was he's not going to be here 
for a couple of months. And, and I think that he was seeing some other folks. And there was plenty of folks that were saying last year was a fluke and he needs to prove it again. So he's going to come out and prove it again. So there's, there's no, like, there's no fault in my mind with this. Uh, it sucks that it happened, but I guarantee you that this is a guy that throughout his career, however long it's going to be with the reds is going to run into injuries like this just because of his style of play. And I don't blame TJ Friedel for playing this way. I kind of blame the reds for not really having a backup plan and, and, and having well, to move on that, which we'll talk about that. Here but yeah, that's, that's a different argument. I, I, I just, I still feel like you have to be cognizant of the situation, right? And if you're a major league baseball player, that's being relied upon to be healthy and to be available when you're playing in games that don't matter in a job that you're not fighting for in a situation that is guaranteed already to be yours. You need to be a little bit smarter than that. You have to, this is, this is the same. It's the same as where we ask these players and sometimes include in their contracts. You can't go cliff diving. You can't ride a motorcycle. You can't do X, Y, Z things because we need you to be healthy. So you can't right. put yourself at risk. This is a situation where, where TJ Friedel had full control to not put himself at risk. So, so I, I get you not wanting to fold up and you're absolutely right about his style of play. And if this had been game one in Cincinnati opening day and, and that's what happened. Well, pun again, them's the breaks, but right. I would, I, I would accept it in a regular season game, but let's okay. So, Enough finger pointing. By the way, if let's, you had the over under on who would give the most puns in today's episode and you picked me, <laughs> normally you're right, but Steve's all over it today. No, no, let, let's let's kind of look let's some drill, more information. Drill down about a little this. more. Yeah. yeah. Drill down because, a little more. Because yeah, I mean we can we can go back and forth on this till we're blue in the face. But here's what happened. He broke the distal radius in his right wrist and non-displaced, like we mentioned, there's no bone out of place or anything like that, which uh, basically it's just the bone like really close to your hand. It's on his right wrist, so really close to your hand like that. And there's just, you know, a, a, a gap now between where the bone was and where it now is. And he's not going to be looked at for another three to four weeks, but based on the timeline and based on looking this up on uh, the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, not exactly baseballreference.com, but I did find another website with information about things. Your computer um, must have been so confused when you were typing <laughs> in this stuff. It's not a favorite website on my computer. I don't know why. Uh, but they said that the three to four week time frame is actually when they're going to take off the first cast and they're going to reassess the swelling and size them for another cast. So when you hear the different timelines and stuff like that, we hear three or four weeks, that's when they're going to take this first cast off. That's not when they're going to start rehab. That's not when they're going to get him back on the field because according to the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, I'm just, I, just, I practiced how many times I'd say that today. I'm, I'm not tripping over it as much as I thought. Um, they said, quote, most distal radius fractures take three months or so to heal before you're able to return to all activities and full recovery from these injuries can take up to a year. Now, the good news is he is a professional athlete. And while he's not exactly Spider-Man or Wolverine and he's going to recover from this in a very, very quick way, he's going to recover from it a little bit quicker than if, you know, Steve or myself or, or, or you suffered this injury because as our friends over at Reds Content Plus point out, two former Reds outfielders and Jay Bruce and Adam Duvall suffered the exact same injury. Jay Bruce, um, was that 2011? I think it was um, that he I suffered that way back. He was, he was out for two, he was out for two months. Adam Duvall suffered it last year as a member of the Red Sox playing in center field. And he was out for two months as well. And both of them returned to play and still hit for power immediately after coming back. So yeah, I, I don't there think there's good. any risk. I don't think there's any risk in him come when he comes back, not being able to perform, but I think you're spot on with uh, this two month two month out look at when we're going to see him because not only as you point out three to four weeks, they got to switch the cast. Then they got to get that cast off. Then they got to reevaluate, but he's going to have to go to Louisville and, and get his, his timing back after being out two months, he's not going to be able to just drop right back onto the active roster. So two months for baseball activity, probably. And I would say two and a half months before he's back in Cincinnati, because he's probably going to get a two week rehab assignment before coming back to the active roster. 
Yeah, I mean, don't don't be expecting TJ Friedel back in the in the lineup in May. It's probably going to be more like mid June. June, I, yeah. I, I think at this point is what we're looking at here. So, I mean, that 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 stinks because we talk about and we we'll talk a lot about this as we head toward opening day. The Reds need to start fast. And they cannot they cannot do this thing where they they muddle around under 500 in the month of April and then they have to make up the ground there. Not having a center fielder is going to be a little bit tough, uh, tougher to accomplish that. Yeah, these these division championship aspirations, they're a bit damaged by TJ Friedel missing the beginning chunk of the season. All right, Jeff, with TJ Friedel out, the Reds have a plan to cover center field, and it's not necessarily a great plan, but it's a plan. We're going to tell you what they're going to do and how they think they're going to cover it next. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or the one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets back if your first bet of $5 wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines, over-unders. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just bet a $5 bet, win that bet, $200 in bonus bets is coming your way. There are also some player futures you can check out over at FanDuel. FanDuel has the over-under on homers for CES at 23. I have told you I think he's going to hit well over 23, so I'm going to head over there and take the over. That's the 23 and a half on the over-under for CES is homers on the 2024 season. Take the over. That seems like the easiest over we've seen in a long, long time. Just, just, just visit FanDuel. Dot com slash locked on and bet on baseball or college hoops until they cut down the nets. As you know, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel, Locked On Sports Today. Baseball fans, mark your calendars for March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time for the best Major League Baseball season preview. It's going to be coming your way exclusively to Locked On Sports today. On March 20th at 7 p.m., be the first to get local insight from all of MLB's local experts like Jeff and I on the Locked On Podcast Network. Everybody has participated in this preview, and you are going to get more information than you thought possible. You're going to be dialed in on all of Major League Baseball. So check it out on March 20th at 7 p.m. on Locked On Sports today. Locked On's 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or a free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Coming up on the next episode of Locked on Reds, Frankie Montas has another tune-up opportunity. We're going to dissect his performance and tell you again why spring training lines don't necessarily matter. All right, Jeff. <laughs> Let's keep looking at this TJ Friedel situation. Uh, we've talked about what happened. We've talked about uh, what we think needs to happen for the recovery, what it looks like. Uh, before we get too far into uh, how the Reds are going to cover it, let's hear from TJ just about how he's feeling right now. I have to just talk to the doc and everything and look at some of the imaging, and it's a, a wrist fracture. Um, so right now it's just going to be waiting for the bone to heal. Um, I got to be in this like a, kind of like a soft cast um, and then just kind of reassess in uh, three to four weeks and see see where it's at and, and see uh, – Kind of where things are lining up and um then we'll get a better timetable after that the only thing that i could really do is just let the bone heal um you know so i'm going to do everything on my end i can to just kind of keep the hand stable and in place and, and not uh move it around um and just let the bone heal on its own you know there's there's a couple things in there jeff the first thing was he talks about that three to four week time table that you mentioned and what he said was if you listen closely what he said was it'll be three to four weeks before we get a timetable. We're going to get that three to four weeks past. We're going to get that soft cast off. Then we'll have a timetable. So I think we're pretty spot on with mid June. I think that is probably going to be the direction to go. So that's a lot of ground now that the reds are going to have to cover. That is all of April, all of may, probably half of June that the reds have to have a different plan for center field. So how are they going to do it? How do they replace the guy that was supposed to be the center field captain general and supposed to be the leadoff hitter in this lineup? Well, I think the, the leadoff 
portion of this is probably an easy fix. We'll see Jonathan India up there. We'll see Matt McClain up there. I think those are the two guys that will lead off the most in the absence of TJ Friedel. Defensively is a much bigger problem. And how do you want to begin this? Do you want to talk about it? Do we want to hear from Nick Crawl? Where do you want to go? Yeah, let's let's hear it because Nick gave a few thoughts, just, just quick thoughts about this right now because it seems like they're just in the beginning process of trying to figure out a plan here. We, we've had some internal discussions, uh, nothing concrete just yet. We're going to have uh, Will Benz is going to play some center field. Uh, Stuart uh, Fairchild is going to play some center field. Um, and we'll just have to figure out uh, what, uh, you know, what the best options are. This and, really concerns me. This, this figure out what the best options are. We've been saying, you, me, they've been needing to figure out what the best options are for this outfield since the end of last season. Now, yeah. as, as high of grades as we gave Nick Crawl for how he handled the bullpen and what he did to upgrade it and for the depth that he built in the starting pitchers, this is a tremendous failure to address the outfield when they had the opportunity to do it. You and I have been talking about Adam Duvall and Michael Taylor for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. They didn't do anything. They stood pat. Both those guys have signed now on other teams and the Reds are in big trouble. Uh, an outfield with Will Benson in center field or Stuart Fairchild in center field means that on the corners, depending on the handedness of the pitcher, you could see Jonathan India, Stuart Fairchild, Spencer Steer as your outfielder. If ever there was a time that Reds pitchers needed to figure out how to fix that ground ball percentage that you talked about, <laughs> it's right now. Because listen, friends, there's going to be a lot of balls drop in Great American Ballparks outfield this year. Really glad that they got Nick Martinez for that reason and Brent Suter as well. Uh, no, you, you're exactly right. And the defense is really where we're going to struggle with this. I mean, Stuart Fairchild defensively is is pretty fine in center field. Uh, Will Benson profiled as a guy who could play in center field. He played a little bit of center field for the Guardians after he was drafted there and coming up through their farm system farm system. I think he played center field in like a couple of major league games for the guardians before being traded down here. But ever since becoming a red, he has played very little in center field, mostly just in right field. So for him to make that move, especially after we've already said one of the things he needs to become more consistent on this season is his routes and, and how he tracks fly balls and things like that. It's going to become even more important and imperative that he does that this season if he's playing center field for as long as he's going to have to like i i don't have a problem at all with how the lineup moves in this case i think that the lineup is still pretty deep and even if you have to bat Stuart fairchild he is a replacement level player he's not going to hurt you he's not going to help you a whole lot but he's not going to hurt you but i don't know what that means for run prevention. Like, are the Reds now going to have to outscore everybody 10 to 9? Because, I mean, and, and I think that pitching does play a role in this, but it does feel like if you got a ball that's hit out of the infield, it's going to make me tense up a little bit while I'm watching that game because it doesn't seem all that great with these internal options. And look, you could even say maybe Jake Fraley plays some center field, although. You know, he hasn't since the foot injury last year. Does he get that opportunity this year? We'll see. But it's kind of six, one half dozen the other, if you ask me. They don't have a backup center fielder that you feel good about. I mean, they got Bubba Thompson, but Bubba Thompson can't hit the broadside of a bar. So, you know, he can catch, but he's going to be an automatic out when he's in the lineup. So I just, I wonder about this. And I was with you. I mean, we, we talked about this off season. I can't remember if I got up to an a minus, but I didn't want to give them an a because they needed to address this in some way. And all of the guys that we wanted them to go get are now gone, including Michael A. Taylor, who went to the pirates and is probably going to do, you know, come back to haunt the reds and at least a couple of times this year. Yeah. Uh, Will Benson has 14 career games in center field. Uh, Jake Fraley, a little bit better, has 34 career games in center field. There, There's just not a whole lot of experience, Jeff, out there as far as uh, the outfielders that remain yeah. being able to play in center field. And it gives me a lot of pause, not so much because I don't think these guys can go out there and do it. I, I mean, they are professional athletes. They're professional baseball players. They they are going to be able to go out there and and at least be okay but they got to be able to help the other guys that are really inexperienced outfielders. You know, Spencer Steer going into his first full year of the outfield. 
uh, Jonathan India having never played out there before. And you know who the most experienced center fielder on the team is? Stuart Fairchild. Stuart Fairchild with 52 games in center field. So, you know, I mean, <sighs> talk about talk about a guy where I've been saying, like a 4A player shouldn't even make the roster. You've been saying, ah, oh, he might be the 25th man. He might be the most important guy on the team right now because he is your center field experience. And 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 for Nick Crawl to have allowed it to get to this point, I think is a tremendous failure. Yeah, I mean, and, and look, we have been one to sing his praises, but he's certainly not perfect, and and this is a perfect reason as to why. So could he rectify that? Could he go out and get somebody? Like we said, our top options are gone. And so there's not really a whole lot of guys out on the open market that are intriguing, except for one guy. Who's that guy, Steve? Yeah, so you first, just to be clear, you and I started with, well, let's check in on Tommy Pham. As much as we didn't really consider Tommy Pham, we thought he was a little too old. We thought he wasn't a good fit, but now he's like number one on the list. Rumors are he's already working on a deal and he's going to be signing pretty quick. Now, maybe the Reds could swoop in, but the way things have gone, I don't see that. So that leaves one guy, and that's Robbie Grossman. Now, I know uh, on its surface, you're like, who, what, Robbie Grossman, whatever. But here's the thing. He hits lefties really, really well. He plays both corner outfield spots. He's a switch hitter. Slash line last year, 238, 340, 394. Not numbers that are going to get you overly excited. He's o OPS plus was 100. League average. League average guy. As a fill-in for two and a half months until TJ Friedel can get back. I think that's perfectly acceptable and it's a little bit more reliable than just waiting around and doing that thing where we hope that you've made the best decision possible to keep the team uh, in contention. Now he doesn't have a lot of experience in center, but he does at least bring you the right-handed bat that's now painfully missing because uh, Stuart Fairchild is going to be your center field platoon. What are you doing in the other corners? Uh, they really need another right-handed bat, I think, uh, in order to get through these two and a half months. And I think Grossman's at least intriguing and can play a little bit of center field in the mix. I think there's one other question I have about this as well, but it's clear that the roster is moving in a way that we're not exactly enthused about, although there's talent on this team and they could prove to be a good option and this could all work out. But again, we're just adding more question marks to this team that it feels like they've already got to answer quite a few question marks already. I still think that they've got a good shot here, but it's been damaged. It's definitely, I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying they're going to win 90, 85 still definitely, definitely within the realm of possibility, but 90 might be a little bit harder to attain without TJ Friedel for a large chunk of the season. But I got one more question about this that I want to ask uh, coming up here in just a moment. And also there's like a laundry list of injuries going on right now. And it's got a lot of people worried. We're not one of them. We'll tell you why coming up next. Before I tell you about that, I want to tell you about eBay Motors. eBay Motors is the way to keep your ride or die alive. Go to ebaymotors.com and you can get the guaranteed fit on your ride for your next part because they've got everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power or style ebay motors has you covered they've got over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die and you'll always find exactly what you're looking for because they've got that ebay guaranteed fit where your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices that you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP you look into and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only exclusions do apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to us customers. Join the locked on reds insiders today. I've got a revamped program for this upcoming season, and I want you to become an insider. For $4.99 a month, you'll become smarter as a Reds fan and get all the latest updates. I can't promise about anything else. You'll become a smarter uh, food eater at the ballpark as well. I, I love talking about ballpark food, uh, but it's really just going to be baseball-centric. Don't your, be asking Your quantity numbers. Stuff. 
Your um, quantity numbers yeah. will definitely go up. <laughs> but text the word insider to 513-597-0944 and get a free 14 day trial to see if you like it. All right, Steve, uh, before we jump into the laundry list of injuries that has everybody all worried and stuff like that, there's one other question that I, I had to ask because there's some folks that are asking this around Red's country, and I think it's a viable one. Why did they let Jose Barrero go so early? I mean, between oh. Noavi Marte being hurt or being suspended and TJ Friedel being hurt, kind of feels like Barrero would have been okay to have on the roster. Yeah, maybe so. I think uh, Nick Craw probably will never openly say it, but I bet they are kicking themselves just a little bit. Um, you know, there were many that we saw question the timing of that Barrero move. And if everybody was healthy, um, I was fine with it. Uh, right. It was a little early, but at the end of the day, Barrero wasn't going to make the team and they were giving him the option and the uh, chance to go catch on someplace else. Okay. They but in hindsight, yeah. you, you want that move back. Now, uh, looking around who's left in the room, uh, Jose Barrero would be a guy that would make this team, even if it was just to to cover help cover some of the right-handed at bats in center field during this two and a half month period, and then you make the decision to to put him on waivers and kick that can down the road a little bit. Um, I, I think you're absolutely right in bringing this up. Uh, this is a scenario where uh, if he was still here right now, he would be on this team. He would be heading to Cincinnati with this team come opening day. 100%. And, and the Reds also informed Josh Harrison that he will not be making the opening day roster. So he has opted out of his minor league contract no longer with the Reds anymore. This one, I'm not as as surprised about with the Jose Barrero compared to Jose Barrero, simply because it kind of felt like Josh Harrison was past the point where he was going to be a super productive member for this team. I still would have liked him in the clubhouse. But again, you got to get out there, you got to hit the ball, you got to produce so the reds weren't convinced that was going to happen however those are two right-handed bats the majority in fact i think it's everybody i mean Stuart fairchild's making this team period he's no longer yeah. part of them will he or won't he he is mm -hmm. making this team so literally everybody else is left-handed <laughs> like yeah. if, you're, if you're trying to have a true 26-man conversation right now it centers around nick martini tony kemp and mike ford who all, all bat left-handed, all of them. And what the Reds don't need right now is another left-handed bat. Some they need to, they got to go find a righty, Jeff. There, there's got to be yeah, some. They're gonna make them. There's got to be a move coming. So you know, so obviously the, the where we're gonna start hearing is the Blake Dunn camp again. And at this point, Jeff, I'm willing to entertain it. I, I have been adamant oh. that I did not want them to do that because you can't bring a guy like that up and not giving playing time. Uh, you can't bring him up to sit on the bench, but I think now with Friedel out, maybe Dunn playing. comes up and gets the playing time. So um, I might be real willing to revisit that part of the conversation. Uh, let's see Blake Dunn the rest of the way in Goodyear, uh, play him every day and, and see if he can play his way onto this roster as a right-handed bat. I don't know if he'd be on the opening day roster, but I could see it be something where he goes to Louisville and has like a good couple of weeks in April and maybe they bring him up in May or at the end of April. Uh, I think that's what's most likely to happen if Blake Dunn is a part of this situation. I, I, I do wonder about that a little bit, though. But yeah, that was something that just struck me because it was like it felt like you had a couple of guys, mostly just Barrero, that, that could have helped provide some depth there. And you moved rather quickly. And it's like you said, like, if everybody else is healthy, that's fine. But they're not. And here we are. Speaking of well, speaking everybody of, else being healthy. Yeah, speaking yeah. of guys that aren't healthy, yeah. Well, well, we both did that at the same time. Stereo effect. <laughs> transition. Let's run through double these, transition. Yeah. Double transition. Let's run, through these, let's run through these injuries real quick, Jeff. Because uh, the one that's most interesting to me is what we're hearing about Sam Mall. Because we haven't seen Sam Mall. We, we don't know how he looks because he hasn't been pitching yet. He continues to be included in the guys that are going to be on the opening day roster in the bullpen. Uh, I think we're hearing that he may pitch today. Yes, he is slated to pitch in tonight's game um, there with uh, Frankie Montas starting. And I, I was actually, I reached out to some folks there in Goodyear to see like what's going on here. The Justin Wilson sign, he made me think that there's something going on with Sam Mall. And according to my sources, it's got nothing to do with Sam Mall. Sam Mall's still expected to be on the opening day roster. It's got everything to do with Alex Young. And Alex Young is probably going to be out for a little bit. 
Um, so that, that was interesting to me because having not seen them in a game just yet, I was worried we're getting to the point where we're, I mean, we're less than double digit games away We're we're 10 days away. We're sparky Anderson days away from opening day. And we just haven't seen him pitch yet. Now relief pitchers don't need that long a runway, but this has got to be like the, the point of no return. Like he's got to pitch tonight and then probably the next two or three games as well. Right, I can't see him going back to back. He's got to recover well tomorrow. Mm-hmm. He's got to pitch well tonight, recover well tomorrow. We'll probably see him the day after that. Uh, what's interesting is, you know, again, talking to our sources out in Goodyear, uh, it seems the Reds' intentions were to carry three left-handers all along, and yeah. and someone's going to be the odd man out. It's going to be interesting to see what they do in the Fernando Cruz versus TJ Antone lane of this thing, because I had assumed two left-handers and that one of those guys would be the odd man out or, or that or that both of those guys rather would be on the team. But with three lefties, someone's going to be the odd man out. I'm curious about that one because, I mean, if you see some of the roster predictions that are out there, TJ Anton is not on them. And well, Mark, Mark Sheldon has T, uh, yep. Fernando Cruz That's over Fernando Anton Cruz. with Anton starting the season in Louisville and both have options. So you can interchange them if, if one of them isn't that great, but it feels to me that that speaks to where the reds are with TJ Anton and they're just not there yet. And I don't know that I can fault them for that. We've talked about mm-hmm. this before that like, until we see him do what he needs to do, it's hard for us to say that we should be able to to count on that. There were a couple of, a a couple other injury updates, um, pretty much knew this already, but Nicola Dolo will probably join the team around April 9th, April 10th for his first start of the season, still on track to do that. He hasn't had any sort of setback, but the one thing that was interesting and the uh, other than TJ Friedel injury news of the weekend was Brandon Williamson leaving his start early and the reports are shoulder soreness, which anytime you tell me about a pitcher's shoulder, I get a little bit of heartburn. Like I'm looking, my tums are not here. I don't know where they are, but I get a little let's, bit of heartburn about it. Let's remember that we're talking about a spring start in Goodyear, Arizona. Um, the Reds are saying it was precautionary. I kind of believe that um, guys do get sore shoulders early in the spring. And this is a starting pitcher that's uh, being looked upon probably as more insurance than anything else. You, you, yeah. you treat him with a little bit of kit gloves. You can pull him from this start. It also lets me know that he's not coming north with the team. He's going to AAA. So they can slow yeah. him down a little bit. They can they can let him get most of that start, rest that shoulder up, come back again. He's going to Louisville. It's fine. Um, I don't think he's hurt. I think this is just normal spring training stuff. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it at all. I think we would hear some different language if it was a true injury. And there was one more thing, and we didn't put it in the notes, but I did see Nick Martinez did throw a simulated game the other day. They said that he responded well to it, so he's still on track to make the opening day roster. They're keeping him stretched out as a starting pitcher. I still think, though, once Nick Lodolo is back, Nick Martinez makes the move to the bullpen, and then that's where we probably see Fernando Cruz get sent down. Interestingly enough, uh, we've talked about them not needing a fifth starter the first week. He could be a reliever the first week. He could pitch a game or two in the first week of the season. They could reevaluate Nick Lodolo, and they'll know whether or not he's going to make that start when Mm -hmm. they need the fifth starter. And if they if they need Martinez to be a starter in the second turn through, then well, you just don't pitch him out of the bullpen. But you can have that extra reliever in the first week of the season with Martinez until you make a decision for the second time through the rotation. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you come full circle. We started talking about a position that there was no depth in. We ended talking about a position that we have lots of depth in. And that is where we're going to end today's podcast. Thanks, everybody, so much for checking out today's Locked On Reds podcast. Remember that we are going to be with you here every single day as we ramp up to opening day. We'll get you set, talk about what the Reds need to do, talk about what the opening day roster is going to look like, keep you all up to date on the injury updates. And by the way, for every day, is coming up tomorrow. Frankie Montas has another tune-up. We're going to dissect the performance and see exactly, hopefully he goes five innings. That's really kind of the thing that I've got this on. I I need to see him go five innings. I hope that's what he does. We'll talk about all that tomorrow. Until then, what can folks expect from you and me, Steve? Well, we're going to keep monitoring all of these things. We're going to keep monitoring the injuries, the news, see if Nick Craw makes a move for a right-handed bat in the outfield. We're going to keep gathering up all of that information to keep you locked on Reds every single day.